What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Just Knock Smith channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to completely tear down and disassemble your F250 front axle. So in yesterday's video, uh, and I'll try to link this in the description box down below as well. If you're taking apart your rear axle, I have a full tear down video on that as well. Um, I don't want to talk too much at the beginning of this video. Uh, and I'm also starting to put in the description box down below uh, timestamps for like when I start doing stuff. So like I put a timestamp for whenever I pulled out the carrier, whenever I pulled out the pinion gear, whenever I pulled out um, the hub assemblies and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that on this video as well. Uh, and I've done that on the rear axle also. So that video will be linked in the description box down below if you need to know how to fully tear down your rear axle. I have a video on that as well. So that was yesterday's video and we got this rear axle completely tore down. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this video and start tearing apart this front axle. All right, guys, so first off, we're gonna start by taking this locking hub out. So there are three T27 bolts, uh, Torx bolts holding this on. Now, after you've got all three of those bolts out, well, that's not supposed to happen. That wasn't supposed to actually happen right there, but no big deal. You just grab it by these clips. That was actually supposed to stay attached. So same thing goes with the rear end. If you watch the video on the rear end, I'm gonna take all of the pieces out right here on the right side, and I'm gonna set them on the right side of my bench, just so I don't lose those. And we are doing new hub assemblies but I still don't want to lose these Torx bolts. And again, these are just tear down videos, guys. So there will be videos on completely reassembling them and they'll be powder coated. So that's kind of why I'm doing this. If you're new to the channel here, we have an F-250 that we're building and we're doing powder coated axles. So that's why I'm disassembling this. I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here on the bench. After you've removed that outer locking hub, and of course you have your calipers and your disc brakes off. These are already off the truck. And now we're gonna take out this top Allen head bolt. And this is what's holding on your ABS line and pull that out. There's also going to be um, some eight millimeter bolts. So there's one eight millimeter bolt right here holding that on. I'm gonna zip that out and then I'll just be able to pull this ABS line out. And we have new ABS lines with our new hub assemblies. All right, guys, so deep back in there, you can see that snap ring. We're going to be using these Nipex 4611A3 40-100mm snap ring pliers. I will have these linked in the description box down below, and it'll say snap ring pliers link here. You'll click that link and purchase these if you're going to be removing your hub assemblies, or if you just want to have these in the shop. They are universal and work for other things as well, but they are super long and thin so you can actually get back in there and also the tips of them are heavy duty enough to not break so what we're going to do is just push these snap ring pliers back in here push in squeeze and pull out so these snap ring pliers make that a piece of cake so now that we have that snap ring off we're going to go ahead and rotate around to the back side meter nuts on the back side of this hub assembly you'll be able to follow these studs through and see these from the back and you can actually get to them with an impact gun all right now that we have those four nuts off i'm going to go ahead and set those over here with everything else and now this is a little bit dangerous with it on jack stands so hopefully this comes off pretty easily i may heat this up with a torch um, but we're just gonna hit this. That's gonna be all that's holding this hub assembly on was those four studs. So after we've got those four nuts off, then we can start hitting this, but make sure that you have the snap ring out. I'm gonna beat this brake uh, dust shield down just so it's a little bit out of the way. Separated already. That was live time. I didn't fast forward anything. So hopefully yours comes apart like this one. All right, and this dust shield just goes right through those studs on the back side. So this dust shield is all bent up and garbage, so we're gonna throw this away. And now what you'll see is your axle shaft right here. 
And in order to get your axle shaft out, you're gonna wanna pry, um, get it straight, and then put you a crowbar or a pry bar back in here. And you're gonna try to pop this out. Now there is a vacuum seal back in here that will make this a little bit hard to get out because that actually presses onto the axle shaft. So hopefully that comes out easy. Um, but if not, then it does help sometimes to put you a flat blade screwdriver in here and actually hit on that seal from the back to help it come out. All right guys, so that is moving quite a bit. But then it kind of stops. So what that is, is that's this big axle seal. So let me spin this around and show you guys this. So all I done was I went in from the back. Sometimes you just gotta hit it from the back, guys. So I just went in here and pushed that big old dust seal out. And that's what that looks like. And these are pretty expensive, but you're actually not supposed to reuse them. But if you have a special tool and your vacuum lock and hubs were good before, then you actually can reuse them. But this, this is gonna get thrown away because I'm not using the vacuum lock and hubs. All right, so I got that axle shaft completely out and I'm gonna just take these plastic pieces and rubber pieces off. So these are your old seals that you'll have right there. And then there should also be one right here, but it's completely gone and deteriorated. But you do have inner uh, seals that keep it from leaking oil. So these you don't technically need. Of course, these are trash anyway, so I'm gonna throw these away. This will be getting replaced with the coilover conversion bracket from PMF Suspension, which is one of the sponsors here on the YouTube channel. So if you are looking to swap over to coilover conversion instead of, uh, instead of coil springs, then you will replace this bracket with a nice fabricated welded bracket that still bolts back on. So you can't always go back to coil springs if you wanted to, or if you sold the truck. And like I said, they are a sponsor here on the YouTube channel, so you can trust them. So next up, we're gonna get some pliers and pull out this carded key. And these things can be a pain, but once you get this carded key out, then you're just gonna loosen up this top nut. So next up, we will be disassembling this upper ball joint. And there's a little nick in the threads right here. All right, so just gonna zip off, just gonna zip that nut off. And if you're going back with new ball joints, which I would hope you would if you're doing this, then you won't need this nut. And the size, the size on the upper one is a one and one fourth. And then the size on the lower one is actually a little bit bigger. So the lower one is a inch and five sixteenths. I'm gonna get that broke loose. And you're just gonna wanna run this nut up to the very, very top. And then you'll be able to hit on this knuckle right here. And once you break that loose, then you come back down here and take that nut completely off. That's what I'm gonna do now. All right, guys, so I just now pulled this bottom nut off of the lower ball joint, and now we're just going to put it back on and spin it a couple times. Doesn't have to be on there far. And hit on this knuckle, and this should actually drop down. Um, alignment bushing that we're going to finish prying out. And whenever you put this back together, the alignment shop will really, really appreciate it if you put some anti-seize in here and clean all that out with a little uh, like sand and wheel because they actually have to pull this little bushing out. So we've got our top ball joint broke loose from the knuckle, but this bottom one is being kind of stubborn. So to get this top one broke loose, I actually started hitting on this, like on the actual ball joint. And that will help a lot. These are Moog ball joints. I'm not sure when they were put in, but this top one is shot. Um, the bottom one, it's still in there really good. 
So I'm gonna try to actually come in here and hit like that and see if I can break that one loose. That bottom one, I think the bottom one is even worse than the top one. That ball joint is shot. And this ball joint is shot as well. I hope you guys can see this. So next up, we're going to pull this snap ring off of the bottom. There's not a snap ring on the top. And then we're going to press these old ball joints out. And then that's pretty much how you disassemble the hub assembly with the ball joints, the axle shaft, the other side is exactly the same. So after I show you how to press these ball joints out, we're gonna go ahead and pull this differential cover, drain the differential fluid, pull out the carrier and the uh, pinion gear. All right guys, so what we've got here is a master ball joint press kit. I will link a cheap one and a pretty good uh, all around ball joint press kit. You don't have to get one with this many attachments. So I'll link one with fewer attachments and then one with like all of the attachments like pictured, uh, like you're seeing right here. But pretty much you have a C-clamp style ball joint press kit. Uh, you've probably seen one of these before. So we're pretty much driving this rod into the receiver cup right here. And then the ball joint stud is actually coming through and then that's gonna press out the ball joint. So just put our impact gun on here and drive this ball joint out. So that cup allowed me to press out the ball joint to right here, but then it actually started contacting on that. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna swap over to this one. And now that we are back on here and secured, drive it, drive it the rest of the way out. Um, but there was a snap ring on the bottom, so make sure you take that snap ring off. You have to take the bottom one out first because in order to take this top one out, you actually have to run the tool like through the bottom hole. And then the same thing goes like whenever you put the ball joints back in, you'll put the top one in first and then put the bottom one in. So we are aligned and centered. Now we can just drive this upper ball joint out. And then here is your old ball joint completely pressed out. And then you're left with just this blank knuckle that's ready to go off to sandblast and then off to powder coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out this side off camera. I may actually throw up a little time lapse. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a little time lapse and knock this side out. Then we can go ahead and pull this differential cover and start removing the carrier and the pinion gear and the seals. So one quick thing that I wanted to show you guys and give you a little tip or trick on is before we get into the differential itself, this track bar ball joint, sometimes it's pesky to actually get pressed out because it has this big stud on it. That's hot because I literally just now cut that off. But anyway, if you make you just a little slice in this boot, then this boot will actually come off super easy. You don't have to fight with it. And then this stud, I literally just cut it off flush and then you have a big cup. Your cup at the top has to be bigger than the actual ball joint. Um, and then this is gonna press up and out of here. So cut that stud off and then it allows you to get your ball joint press on there so much easier. So uh, I have to rotate this axle just a little bit so then the impact gun will fit on here because it's hitting the ground. So I'm gonna rotate this axle and literally just drive that ball joint out like it ain't nobody's business.
And then this right here is what you're left with. With that stud cut completely off, that ball joint would just press right out. So that's a really, really easy trick that I have for pressing these ball joints out. And it only takes like 25 seconds, 30 seconds to uh, cut off that stud. And then this is a lot easier to work with because you're just kind of pressing out this cup. All right, guys, so now we are ready to tear apart the actual differential itself and get the carrier out and the pinion gear out. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go ahead and take out all the bolts except for the top one on the differential cover, pop that cover off and let the fluid drain out for just a little while. Make sure you have the axle rotated to where it's pointing downward so as much fluid as possible can drain out. And then uh, obviously I'll show you that. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so next up, you're gonna wanna get a 9 16 we're gonna leave this very, very top bolt in. We're gonna take all of the other ones out. So on this top bolt, we're gonna loosen it up, but not take it all the way off. And I can tell by the gasket on this that this has been opened up before. The pinion nut on the back is also a brand new nut. So that's another way that I can tell. So hopefully whoever was in here last knew what they were doing and this, uh, We'll hold up for a while. So anyway, we're going to find a little spot where the differential cover is hanging over. We're gonna come from the back with a chisel and just whack it one time. All right, I didn't even need a chisel. I just kind of hit on that differential cover. And there's not much fluid coming out of this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip this cover off. All of this looks brand new. Literally all of that looks brand new and the fluid that is coming out, even though there wasn't a whole lot, it literally looks like brand new fluid. So I'm just gonna let that drain for a second, spray some brake clean in there. The, like the look of this metal, I'm pretty sure this has all been completely rebuilt because that all looks like it's brand new. So yeah, awesome. That looks really good. So I'm gonna let that drain for a little bit and then literally one, two, one, two, four bolts and we'll be able to pull this big carrier out of here. All right guys, so we just now pulled off the first clamp. I'm gonna go ahead and set this exactly how it went. So it came out exactly like that. So I'm gonna go over here, set it on the right side to show that that will go with the right side stuff. And same thing goes with this. I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here. Okay guys, so what I've done just now um, to get this popped out of here just a little bit was I took this and I went right in here and I literally just barely, it didn't take much pressure at all, but just barely hit on that. And it completely, it's just gonna pop loose just a little bit and then you should be able to pull it right out of here. Then we're gonna grab this and make sure you hold these rings right here on the bearing. I just go ahead and put my fingers through there and then you can't lose anything. And pick that up and out of here. And then we're gonna set it over here. And now that's gonna expose all of this right here. And then on the left side and the right side, you have these inner seals and we will be changing those seals. So we're actually gonna come in from the outside out here and we're gonna just hit those seals out so right there is the race so that's how that seal goes together that's normally in there so as I was just now showing you this used to be like sitting right there and then that was held in by this bushing right here so it went in there like that and now that is completely all gone and we will be replacing that with a new seal. So now same thing on this side, except on this side, I don't think that we'll be able to come in from the outside, but if we can find something long enough to hit that out, that would be awesome. But I don't know if we'll be able to. So I'm gonna look around for, see if I can find something long enough. And if I can, I'm gonna hit that out from the outside if not, then we can just work around prying on it from right here. So I actually have this big red crowbar 
super long. And I'm driving it all the way through. And I'm just gonna back it up right here and drop it down onto the ledge that you can feel. And now I'm gonna hit that seal out. All right, so now that is the inner carrier bearing seal. And we've got both of those out. And like I said, one went right here. The other one went over here on this side. And then that's gonna be all of the seals that you have. So you can go and discard these old garbage seals. And now, as you can see, we still have the pinion gear in here. So I'm going to do that next. We're gonna go ahead and take the nut off the back side and pull all of that off. Nut on the back, and then a washer. And then you're gonna pull this carrier off right here. And then you have your pinion seal, which is right here. So if you watch the rear end video, this is gonna be pretty much the same. Okay, so you just wanna pry that off. Then after you've got that piece off, now you should be able to put the nut back on and then beat this out. So now you have your pinion gear right here. And then right here is your pinion seal, which we're going to take out next. So now you just want to go around and around until you get this pinion seal all the way out. And whenever you finally get that pinion seal out, just be careful um, because you don't want to lose anything. So we will be putting a new nut on. So it went nut, washer, then this piece, then the pinion seal came out in two pieces. Um, and then it has this slinger and the pinion bearing right here on the front. So we're gonna keep up with all this, set it how it goes. I'm gonna keep this washer and I'm gonna keep this nut, even though it is destroyed, I'm gonna keep this nut and I'm gonna get a new one, but I'm gonna keep it just so that I know um, which way everything went. All right, guys, so we've got the pinion gear out and the carrier out. The front axle is completely disassembled. So last thing that we have to do before we can just sand out all of the casting marks and take this stuff to sandblast is take out all of these big axle pivot bushings and these things are a pain the only way that i can get them out fairly quick is with an air chisel and literally just destroying the edges like half of it on each side so once you destroy like half of it on each side it kind of bends it enough to where it can come out so i went ahead and done one just to show you and when I say like this is time consuming, it's pretty time consuming. Like I was air chiseling on this for about, I would say 10 minutes straight. Um, and some of them are gonna come out easier than others. The real pain is whenever we have to put these babies back in, whenever we get the brand new ones from Ford. So pretty much I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna set up the time lapse and take both halves on each side and drive this thing out. So let's go ahead and get this done. And then we'll knock out these two and then we'll be done and completely disassembled, ready to go off to sandblast and powder coat.
And just like that, guys, we've got all of the axle bushings out. So like I said, use that air chisel, take your time. So obviously try not to damage these races whenever you do this. And of course you can take you some sandpaper and go around in that real smooth and sand all that down before you press the new bushings in. But since I've got the axle bushings out, that's literally a complete teardown. So the next thing that we're gonna do is just remove this piece right here. And I'm gonna do that off of camera. And then probably on one of our future videos, we're gonna show sanding all of these casting marks out of the axles. So you have casting marks from where this axle housing was casted. And we're gonna get rid of all of those before we take it to sandblast on top and bottom and on the front axle and the rear axle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know there was quite a few comments on the rear end video and a couple of y'all had asked me to do the front, which I already had that planned and in motion anyway. Stay tuned for the rebuild series. So make sure you get on there and click that subscribe button because I'll be showing you a full parts list on all of the seals and part numbers and ball joints and everything that you'll need to rebuild the front axle and to rebuild the rear axle. So there will be uh, the full teardown videos, which are done now, the front and the rear tear, tear down videos. Um, and then there will be the rebuild videos after we get these back from sandblast and powder coat and we have to rebuild these axles. So we'll be showing them going back together as well and all of the parts and seals that you'll need to do that. So stay tuned to that guys. Always remember everybody starts out as nobody and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. So these are all of the components that are going into the garbage. These are all trash components that can't be reused. Ball joints are bad, all these seals and whatnot. So I just wanted to kind of show you the aftermath of completely tearing down your axle, kind of what you'll be replacing and kind of what all just gets discarded and thrown away. All right, guys, I just want to add a clip to the end of this video right quick. Huge shout out to Smoky Mountain Truck Fest. They sent me out a t-shirt. So you're probably going to be seeing me wearing this fire t-shirt in some of the videos. Right here, you already know, we go to Smoky Mountain Truck Fest every year. Right here's a top 25 trophy and a top 20 trophy. So maybe we can do even better this year because the truck's going to be even more fire. So I just now sat down to edit this video. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Again, huge shout out to Smoky Mountain Truck Fest. It's a truck show in Pigeon Forge, Sevierville area uh, this year, 2022, baby. It's gonna be at the uh, Sevierville Convention Center. So make sure that you come down to the Sevierville Convention Center. I wanna say it's April 8th. It's like that weekend, like whatever weekend is around April 8th. I can't remember. Um, but dude, it's a great time, great show. Usually it's at the Smoky Stadium, but this year it's at the Sevierville Convention Center. So it's gonna be indoor. So there's gonna be a lot of top notch quality builds there. And this shirt's really cool. I wish I had my tripod, it's in the garage. Um, but it has a bunch of like sponsors and stuff on the back. I'll show you right quick. Oh, yeah Smoky Mountain Truck Fest All right, so I better see you guys out there. I'm signing off. Bye